This channel is designed to help you become everything that you can be in life and in the electrical industry. This series here is our electrical master's exam series. It's completely free and it's leading off from our free 10 week series that takes you from opening up the code book all the way into complex load calculations. So I'm really excited about this series. This episode here is going to have a little bit of an introduction, but every episode after this is going to be process after process, calculation after calculation. Let me tell you a little bit about me. My passions are really the electrical industry. I love the electrical industry because the moment you think you got a grasp on the code book, boom, they drop another code cycle. Or you find another exception that you didn't know was in there. And that's what I love about this industry is nobody has ever got it all. But all of us together working together i joke on the job site and i say you know between all of us we make one really good electrician so and that's what's really exciting about this industry is we can all complement each other some are good at running pipes some are good at calculations some are good at you know, figuring out logistics for troubleshooting. So I'm just so thankful that there's a room for all of us in this industry. One thing that I am trying to become is really a bridge in between the super gurus in the code and the average man or woman like myself. So I'm just trying to become a bridge where we can all understand it and hopefully make things plain and clear. I also love business. I am a serial entrepreneur. I was just born that way. Love starting business, love running game. I've got lots of videos on how to make your own website, how to create your own company, how to you know, do your own thing on QuickBooks, whatever you're wanting to do. I am willing to help you become anything that you want to be. I'm available all the time by phone, text, email, however you want to get a hold of me. I also love helping others. That's truly one of my passions. You know, uh, you know, I love the electrical industry. If you're, if you're new in the game, that's great. And there, there is a lot of money and that's a fun game. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. How much money can I make in a day? How much money can I make in an hour? How much money can we bill out in a week? And that is that is fun. Don't get me wrong. But honestly, you start to get to a point in your career where it's how much impact can I make? How many lives can I change? How many other people can I help get their electrical license? How many other people can I see, you know, feel that excitement whose families can change their legacy and break the chain? So I really love helping other people. It's one of my greatest passions. And one of my other greatest passions are really just taking it to the next level constantly, personally, spiritually, physically, professionally tweaking the game, modifying the game. Where have I failed? Where can I increase? Where can I go? And one of the greatest ways I've ever heard it described is called being blissfully discontent. You know, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm thankful for where I'm at, but I'm also discontent in the sense that I want to see how much more I can become the better version of myself. So I'm so thankful. And listen, if there's anything that I can do to help you, encourage you, I just want to see you win. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about the YouTube channel if you're new to the channel. So all of my videos are for free. I just want to see you guys win. I put all the content out there for free, and I'm literally willing to coach you side by side. Other than going in you know, with the test with you, I will help you any way that I can. So every day, Monday through Friday, I do a video series at 9 a.m. called The Electricians in Action, where we get together and we talk about the code before we go out and fight the good fight. Also, every Monday, we go live with the electricians have spoken at 8.30 p.m. Now, what the electricians have spoken is, is that every day on the community tab on my YouTube channel, I drop two polls a day. It'll be code questions and different things about the electrical industry, you know, just to get engaged with you guys. And then what I do at the end of the week is I take all of those together and I turn it into a live video lesson. We try to do it live every week. I turn it into a live video lesson where we answer the questions live and you also can interact and answer questions. So it's pretty cool. I also post Fridays at 8.30 p.m., which which is when we're going to be dropping these videos as we drop them live. And then I'll continue to post different video series once all of this series has been dropped. I also have a lot of other video series, but there is one that is the most important when you're getting prepared for your electrical license or your inspector certifications. And what it is, is what I talked about previously. It's the free 10 week initial course. It literally takes you, if you've never opened up a code book, teaches you how to tab your code book, teaches you how to start from beginning to finish. You could pass any level inspector certification uh, other than plans review probably. And you can pass any other level of uh, journeyman or initial state license in pretty much any state with this core content right here. I will say this, you cannot do the master series without mastering this core content. We're going to talk about that here in just a second. All of my videos are free, but we have created a testing center. And when you're ready to really put the icing on the cake and you're really ready, what we have built is we have built 
tests that go along with each week's video for the original series and also for this series there's going to be tests available so with that being said what you do is you watch the video then you go online on your phone or computer you take the practice tests you go through all the video series and then there's unlimited practice testing on the testing center so we tried to dial it in and make it that if you do the work, you do the stuff, you get your license. So when you are ready, you can go on. It's very inexpensive. It's like $99 for one year. I often run sales. I'm here to just help you guys in any way. We also sell the tabs and code books and different things. We just want to be able to serve you guys as, you know, as good as we can. At the same time, we try to keep it very inexpensive. Um, if you guys have watched the original 10 week series, you know that we started from the bottom. So we don't want this to be out of reach for anyone. If, and listen, if you ever need help or need to split it into payments or anything like that, you're welcome to call me anytime. So let's go ahead and move on. All right, guys. So before we take this program, I got to sit down and be real with you just for a minute. As much as I want to see you win on every single level, there's some things that we have to do. You know, we can't jump straight out of high school to a master's degree. You got to go through the bachelor's first. Same way in electrical. You cannot just start out and become a master. Now, you're always working on becoming a master, but, you know, and being a master electrician sounds great. But here's the deal, guys. You got to pay your dues. And if you don't, you try to cheat the game. You try to, you know, it just won't work for you. So I want to see you win and with that said I've got to build you on a proper foundation so first off as far as the master's license goes let's talk about it so first find out in your state if you need or want a master's license now I want you to be able to test on the master's level just to ultimately fulfill that master electrician qualifications but honestly guys and I'm going to give a good example in my state you don't need what's called a electrical contractor's license that's only if you want to do projects that are more than $25,000 per project. So I can, you can, with the initial license, you can have a thousand projects going on that are $24,999, but you can't have one that's $25,001. With that being said, I got the master's le license level license in my state initially or took the master's levels test because there were a couple cities in my area that required you to test at a master's level before you could work in their city. But I never had to go get my state electrical contractor's license. I don't need you know, to work over $25,000 per project. If I'm doing a subdivision, each one of them has a different address, so it's a different you know, it's a different permit, so it's no big deal for me. So find out if your state, if you even need the master's license. Just like a master's degree, it sounds amazing, but you don't want to spend four extra years in college getting a master's degree to find out you're only going to make as much as a bachelor would have. Now, you, you may want to master your craft, but don't spend time getting a master's license. Honestly, guys, in your state, like mine, it may just be more fees. More fees, more fees, more processing, more licensing. So find out if you even need a master's license. You may be able to do everything you ever want to do with your initial state license or whatever that looks like in your state. And here's the deal, guys. If you want to test at a master's level, you can still go take that test and say that you've passed the master's test. So there's nothing wrong with that, but you may not have to follow through and actually get the license. Uh, one thing that I really highly encourage before you take this program, if you just want to watch it and follow along, that's great. But this program will not make sense to you until you have mastered the free 10 week electrical licensing program that I told you about. The one that's taken you from the beginning all the way into it. You have to master that stuff in order to be able to take this program here. It's super important. You can, there are no shortcuts for the master's level testing. You've got to take that program. You know, even if you've gotten your license in the past, I highly encourage you go back through it because what we're going to be dealing with in this master's course, guys, is just complicated process after complicated process. And here's the deal. If you're emailing me and asking questions and things, you guys know uh, if you know me at all, you know, by dealing with me now and watching my videos, I will help you with anything. But if you're emailing me, calling me or testing me about the master series and you've not taken the, the initial 10 week course, there's not going to be a lot I can do to help you. So I want to be able to help you on every level. You've got to, you know, you got to pay to play. You, you've got to do that initial series first in order to build up to this series. All right. So like I said, you've got to practice and master at the journeyman level testing. This series here will not make sense to you if you have not mastered the journeyman level testing. 
You've got to master it because what we're doing, really all the master's test is all about, there are some new processes, but really, guys, it's taking what you've learned in that first 10-week course and it's just magnifying it. It's taking it to the most extreme. It's doing a three-phase version of every type of calculation. So it's just taking it to the next it's taking it to the master level and that's that's what i'm so excited about for you guys is that when this journey you're on the journey to becoming a master and i'm just so excited for you and you know it i really encourage it but you do not have to have it a journeyman or entry levels electrical license already this is not i'm not laying any burdens on you if you want to be able to If you put in the work, you deserve the license. If you put in the work, you deserve the license. So listen to me. I have no problem and I will not hold you back, but it will be very hard for me to help you if you've not taken the initial 10-week course. But if you've taken it, you've practiced and uh, mastered testing at a journeyman's level and you want to take all the master's content, I will not stop you and I will do everything in my power to help you. All right, guys. So here's the deal. This course is designed to prepare you for master level testing. It is a whole different ball game. You're likely going to fail your first test in your state. In my state, it's a four hour exam. So it's a, not only is it, you know, knowing the master's content, it's an endurance test. So I'm going to prepare you for that master level testing in our practice tests on the website and also in, you know, just the content that we're doing and you've got to do it over and over and over. Who I'm so excited. All right. So here I'm going to inform you about the master level responsibility. This is something, guys, that we just got to be aware of. You know, our our business is super litigious anyways. OK. And you have to be very thorough, very to the code, very by the book. When you get to the master level, all of the excuses go out the window. If, you know, God forbid you ever had to go to the courtroom and you're testing at a master level and you have your master electrician's license, any of those excuses, I forgot, I didn't know, I didn't understand, are going to be very weak in the court of law. They're going to say, sir, you're a master electrician. You're committed to the craft. You tell me you didn't, you know what I mean? So you just have to understand the master level responsibility in your work. And listen, this is something, thankfully, thankfully, there is, um, you know, a, a, a continual process of growing in the field. There are many things that I've installed where later on I found out that I did, you know, a portion of it wrong or something was wrong. And thankfully, there is that growing grace there. You know what I mean? Where you're continually growing and evolving and becoming a better electrician. But the master level responsibility, all those I didn't know in those whoopsies, um, kind of, you know, start to become very thin if you were to ever have to go to a court of law or something like that. All right. So I want to encourage you to fight for what you want. Figure out what you want and go get it. I want you to figure out what you want and go get it. We cannot just aim around aimlessly, you know, punching at the air, hoping that great things come our way. If you want to become a master electrician, then just go get it. Hammer. If you want to become a journeyman electrician, then just go get it. If you want to start your own business, then just go get it. There is so much information out there. You can go get it. You put in the work and you'll get it. I'm excited for you. All right, so I want to guide you through the preparation process. This test is like this examination on the master's level. It's a process. So, you know, preparing you, guiding you through, eating your breakfast, scheduling a time of day that works for you where you're, you know, you're at your cognitive best, you know, uh, working hard, um, you know, and all these different things. And I'm really here to coach you. The master's levels test is very hard. Or they would, you know, they're not just handing them out. So you have to test, you have to grind, and you got to want it. And I'm here to help you every step of the way. Also, I want to help you be everything that you want to be. Listen, I have very few zones that I shine in, and I try to stay in those zones that I do shine in. But business, contracting, estimating, building companies, working with people, uh, bridging from taking an idea all the way to executing the job you know, to the plans, whatever we got to do, that's where I shine at. And I will help you in any way that I can start a business, start a company, get your license, anything that I can do for you, I will do it. And that's what this course is designed to do. Now let's take a look at what this, because this course is not designed to do. All right. This course is not designed to make you into a master electrician. Like I said before, becoming a master electrician is a lifelong journey. Now, it is prepared to help you test at a master level, 
but we cannot take you off the street and teach you these processes and turn you into a master electrician. The greatest way to become a true master electrician is five-day-a-week aggressive electrical work. That's the fastest way. There are other paths, but the fastest way to become a journeyman um, or journeyman level, you know, whatever that looks like in your state, and then become a master is through five-day-a-week aggressive electrical work. Anything that I can do to help you get job placement, recommendation, you know, teaching you tactics for how to get a job somewhere if you don't have one, I will help you any way that I can. But this course is not designed to make you into a master electrician. This course is not designed to guarantee that you pass the examination. I do not know if you have the aptitude, the grind, the grit that it takes to test at a master level. I can't guarantee that. I can't guarantee that you'll do the work, put in the processes, put in the blood, sweat, and tears, sacrifice, whatever it takes. And listen, this may be easy for you, and I hope it is. I hope you get this stuff, and it's super fluent, and hopefully I've taken the time and made it easy to understand for as complex as it is. But listen, I cannot guarantee that you'll pass the examination. All right, I cannot cover everything that you might face on the test. You know, constantly I'm dropping supplemental material. I'm dropping new lessons. We're learning new things every day in the code, but I can't cover everything that you might face. Every state's a little bit different. Every game's a little bit different, but we do try to cover as much as we can. All right, so I cannot hand you this on a platter. Listen, I would love more than anything to be able to, you know, work with you, go in the testing center with you, coach you along while you're taking your test, but I cannot hand this to you on a platter. And listen, you wouldn't appreciate it as much if I could. If you could just buy into this game, you'd have people running around being master electricians all the time. There would be no clout to it. There would be no prestige to it. There would be no respect to it. So I cannot hand you this on a platter, but hopefully I've brought it down where you know an average person like myself can be able to, if they put in the work, process it, and go get it done. And this course is not designed to make all of your wildest dreams come true. <laughs> Let's get to it. All right, guys, so I'm really excited to get started. We're going to be starting in dryers and building from there. What is the total demand for 11 dryers with a nameplate rating of 5,200 watts each using the standard method? Remember, when we're using the standard method, we're going to calculate dryers at a minimum of 5,000 VA or the nameplate rating, whichever is greater. So we take our 11 dryers, we multiply it by 5,200. That's going to give us 57,200. Now we're going to head over to table 220.54 and we're going to find out what the demand factor is for 11 dryers. We find out that the demand factor is 47%. So we take 57,200, multiply it by 0.47. That's going to give us 26,884 and we are going to select C. Great job. Let's get to it. All right, let's jump into another one. What is the total demand for nine dryers with a nameplate rating of 4,700 watts each using the standard method? Remember, when we're using the standard method, we'll calculate the dryers at a minimum of 5,000 VAs or the nameplate rating, whichever is greater. In this case, our minimum is 5,000 because our nameplate rating was only 4,700. So we take nine multiplied by 5,000. That's going to give us 45,000 watts or 45,000 VAs. Then we head to table 220.54 to find out what our demand factor is for nine dryers. We find out that it's 55%. So we take 45,000, multiply it by 0.55, and that's going to give us 24,750. And we select B. Great job. Let's do one more easy one as a refresher before we get into the more complex calculations. What is the total demand for two dryers with a nameplate rating of 5,100 watts each using the standard method? Remember, when we're using the standard method, we calculate the dryers at a minimum of 5,000 VA or the nameplate rating, whichever is greater. We take two multiplied by 5,100, and that's going to give us 10,200. Then we head over to table 220.54 and find out what our demand factor is for two dryers. When we get to that table, we find out that there is no demand factor. You calculate it at 100% up to four dryers. So we just take straight math, two multiplied by 5,100. That's going to give us 10,200. And the total demand for this one is A, 10,200. Great job. All right, guys, this is when it starts to get fun, and this is where we have to really start to master this content. What is the total demand for 19 dryers with a nameplate rating of 4,700 watts each using the standard method? Remember, when using the standard method, we'll calculate the dryers at a minimum of 5,000 VAs or the nameplate rating, whichever is greater. I know I say it over and over, but these are processes and methods that you just have to master. That's what being a master is all about. 
So we take 19 and we multiply it by 5,000. That is going to give us 95,000. Remember, we used 5,000 because the nameplate was only 4,700. Now we're going to head to table 220.54 and we're going to find out what the demand factor is for 19 dryers. Now these demand factors are a little bit more complicated, so we just have to take our time. So what it states is, is that it is 47% base and then minus 1% off that base for each dryer past 11. It sounds very complicated, but I've got it broke down very simply. So what you'll do is first figure out the difference in between how many dryers you have and 11. In this case, we have 19. So we just take 19 minus 11 and we have eight more dryers than 11, which means we have eight more percent that we're going to reduce from 47% in order to find our demand factor. So we take 47 minus eight and that's gonna give us 39. That is our new demand factor. So now we can go back to doing straight math. We take 95,000 multiplied by 0.39. That's going to give us 37,050. And we're going to select D. Remember, just take your time. Do these problems over and over. You're also going to be able to do them over and over in the testing center if you decide to sign up for it. Here's the score. Just take your time one step at a time. Don't get overwhelmed. You can do this. You can get it. Let's get to it. All right, guys, deep breath. Let's take it slow. We got this. What is the total demand for 29 dryers with a nameplate rating of 5,000 watts each using the standard method? Remember when we use the standard method, it's a 5,000 minimum VA or the nameplate rating, whichever is greater. We're going to take our 29 dryers. We're going to multiply it by 5,000. That's going to give us 145,000 VAs. Then we head to table 220.54 and we find out what the demand factor is for 29 dryers. This one's a little more complicated, but we're going to take it a piece at a time. You got this. 35% is the base and then minus 5% for each dryer past 23. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out how many dryers past 23 we are. Then we're going to continue on. So we take 29, which is the dryers we have, minus 23, and that's going to give us a difference of six. Then we're going to take six and multiply that by a half a percent, and that's going to give us three. Then we have to go back to the percentages. We take 35% and minus the three that we've gained, and that's going to give us 32%. Then we're going to continue with our math. We take 145,000 VAs. We're going to multiply that by 0.32, and that's going to equal 46,400. And we're going to select B. Let's get to it. All right, now I want us to size a service for these 29 dryers. Remember, everything that we're doing is not ultimately just to figure out the total demand, but really it's to size the service, size the pipe, size the wire, and size the overcurrent protection. So I want us, as we're mastering this material, I want us to go over it and over it and over it. And as, as well, I want you guys to be thinking about the end result, because in the next few weeks, we're going to be doing overcurrent protection. We're going to be sizing wire. We're going to be sizing services. And ultimately, all of these load calculations are so we can size the service. So let's go ahead and jump into this one. Remember, we're going to use 5,000 VAs or the nameplate rating, whichever is greater. And we take 29 multiplied by 5,000. That's going to give us 145,000 VAs. Then we're going to head to table 220.54 and we're going to find out the demand factor for 29 dryers. It's 35% as a base and then minus a half a percent for each dryer past 23. First, we have to figure out what our difference is between the dryers we have and the base dryer point. We take 29 minus 23. That's going to give us six dryers. We take six, multiply that by the half a percent by 0.5 and that's going to give us three. Then we have to take our original base percentage of 35 and minus 3%, and that's going to give us 32%. That's our new demand factor. Then what we're going to do is take and multiply that out. 145,000 VAs multiplied by 0.32, and that's going to give us 46,400 VAs. That's our total demand for our little imaginary scenario. 
Now to find out the size service, what we're going to do is we're going to take the total demand and we're going to divide it by the system voltage. In this case, it gives us 193.33 amps. It's below 0.49, so we're going to drop that down to 193. Remember, on these type load calculations, with 0.49 and lower, you're going to round down, and 0.5 and greater, you're going to round up. Then we have to head over to table 240.6a, and that's where we're going to make our selection for our overcurrent device and sizing our service. And in this case, the next size up, which we can use in this rule that we learned in our previous program, is going to be 200 amps. So the answer to this question, for 29 dryers with a nameplate rating of 5,000 watts each, the size of the service and the overcurrent protection is going to be 200. Great job. What size service would be required for 29 dryers with a nameplate rating of 5,000 watts each using the standard method on a 12208 volt three phase system? Remember, we're going to use 5,000 or the nameplate rating, whichever is greater when doing the standard method. So we're going to take and bear this math out like we did before. Then we're going to head to table 220.54. We find out what our demand factors were. It's going to break down to the same answer using the same method. We're going to end up with the same total demand, 46,400. Now we have to size the service, but remember this is three-phase, so there's one extra step anytime you're sizing a three-phase service. So we're going to take our total demand, and we are going to divide it by 208, but not until we multiply 208 by 1.732. Every time you do a three-phase load calculation right before the end, we're going to multiply our system voltage by the square root of 3. 208 multiplied by 1.732, and then we're going to divide. So we take that 208 multiplied by 1.732. It's going to give us approximately 360. We're going to divide that up into 46,400, and it's going to be 128 amps. 0.79 we're going to round up to 129 amps and then we can go on and we can head to 240.6a we're going to select the next closest service up which is going to be in this case 150 amp overcurrent device sizing this at 150 amp service so you just take your time you go through the steps this is what the master's program is all about i'm so excited for you i'm really excited not only about what you're going to become through this program, but what I'm going to become through this program and what we're going to become together. Remember, the question is not as you go out into the field today and you, you know, go to bed tonight and you wake up tomorrow, you go back out in the field or whatever you're planning to do. The question is not what am I getting here? Not what am I getting at this job? What am I getting at this company? What am I getting at this opportunity? What am I becoming here? Not what am I getting out of these videos that I'm watching? What am I becoming by watching these videos? I'm so excited for you. I can't wait to see where this is going to go. I'm really excited for your life and everything that you got going on. If you need me for anything, you can call or text at 423-895-9341 or you can email me at electricalcodecoach.com. Let's get to it.